Do you want early access? Do you want uncut reactions? If so, then check out our Patreon. Link in the description down below. I'm not sure how far we're going to get, because the next episode, I think, is the last episode of the season. <clears throat> so, Promise Neverland Season 2, Episode 10. Last episode, we found out that Norman and the rest of the survivors could, in fact, be cured. There's a lot that happened last episode. I, I guess we're just going to have to see. But I guess we're about to get it confirmed whether or not they are just rushing to the conclusion at the end of this season, or if they have some other stuff in mind and it's going to go on past this season. I don't know. So I think, personally, oh, yeah. if they want to win back the fans that read the manga, they need to somehow end this season with, like, a... Oh, we're going to flash back or find some way to work into the current timeline your favorite arc next season, and everybody's going to be super hyped, probably. In that case, that might be enough to save it for the manga fans that they're like, oh, Goldie Pond's happening next season. <clears throat> Maybe so, but we'll just have to see. So, I've got this Otherwise, cute... if they wrap it up, I feel like this is probably going to be kind of a little bit weak at this point. Yeah, I think They've so, They've set too. up too much stuff to just be... To power quickly resolve it in so two quickly. episodes. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Here we go. I knew it. I knew they were going to... I knew that where there was one episode left in this season, I knew they couldn't let it go. Yeah. God. <sighs> so, yeah, it so is looking like... I don't really know for sure, but it's leaning towards, like, they're just going to... Yeah, they're going to wrap it up. There. In my opinion, like, it's rushed at this point, but it's not horrible. No. It's not like the horrible atrocity that the manga fans are making it out to be, in my opinion. Same, same. Like, I personally I, don't... I still give the first season a solid 10 out of 10, and this yeah. season, like... This season, for me, like, due to a couple things, has dropped, like, and it's probably at an 8 now. Same, that's where I'm but about But if two. it ends on a solid 8... It's not horrible. No, like, no, no, it, no. Yeah, it could have possibly been like way better if they just went ahead and stuck to the manga and yeah, made it longer, probably. But there, I've heard a lot of people complain about different things about the manga too. Like, it didn't necessarily mean it would be any better than an eight if they did stick with it. You know? Well, here's the one thing I'll I'll say about people who are upset and all this. I, I know this is probably going to fall in deaf ears because there's people out there who don't want to hear what I have to say. But here's what I'll say: and if you want to listen to it, fine. If you don't, tune out. Things can be different, and you can still enjoy it. And here's the primary point with that. If you enjoy the manga, the manga is still there for you to enjoy. If you prefer this, then this is now here for you to enjoy. The main thing, the main difference, I'll say, is like, this isn't like a, a creative vision brought on by some rogue animation director. No, this is the original writer of The Promised Neverland leading the narrative on this season. This is how he wanted to do it. Now, if you're upset, now if this upsets you, you know, you need only to breathe easy because this only makes you human. You know, change scares people. But at the same time, you have to be willing to accept that this is what the artist wants. This is what the original writer wants, and if it is not to your liking, then You're fine. You're not obligated to enjoy it. Exactly, right? and that's the thing. The manga really is still there for you to enjoy. Yeah, I really don't blame people that wish that it would have been like the manga, because Me neither. I'm, I'm the same way about Tokyo Ghoul, I'm the same way about Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, I understand it. I'm just saying from the perspective of somebody who hasn't read it, this is still not the worst thing I've ever seen by any means. No, like, and, and here's a, and a good comparative note to it as well. I know that this is going to rub people, some people the wrong way, but this is just like the Joss Whedon version of Justice League and now the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League. I mean, if you like the original Joss Whedon version, it's there for you to enjoy. But now we have the Snyder cut that you can enjoy at your own leisure as well. And the two camps are going to go back and forth, but for the most part, the, the fact that both versions exist is a blessing in its own way. Same thing with this. You're able to enjoy the manga as is, but you're also able to potentially look at this from a different perspective and actually ask yourself, hmm, 
is this actually something that I prefer over what they did in the manga? And I guarantee, and and knowing it's from the original artist adds more validation to it. Adds all the validation needed so for from, this to exist. From what I've heard, there are certain things about the way they did this that I do think I would actually like over the manga. Like, for example, they apparently loaded up on guns when they got to the bunker in the manga. Yeah, it's the one they found behind and the piano. I really enjoy the aspect of them using bows and arrows and just their basic survival skills to get this far, rather than just, like, you know, having a give me of, like, oh, we all have guns now. Yeah. Doesn't matter that we're kids, because anybody can use a fucking gun. Well, yeah, <laughs> like, Survi- well, survivalist, so. well, the survivalist mentality, I mean, instilled in them by Mujika and Sanju, that's something very, like, very integral... And I can see why they had that at the very beginning of this season because we see them have to hunt. We see them have to hunt for the first time, and yeah. when they have to hunt, it at first sickens them. But then they come to understand this is the world that we live in, and this is what we must do to survive. So there are two very big problems I see with this that are personally a problem to me as someone who just watched it as well. Mm-hmm. And one of them is pretty much unsolvable at this point. The other. If it ends next episode, and that's the end of it, is also unsolved. That's, I feel like, I know you said, you know, we can kind of assume and everything, but I feel like the, that writing on the wall at the end of that one episode and the way they cliffhangered that. Yeah. There was too much of an emphasis on that writing, and it was too much of a shocking thing for them to just never touch on anything about how it got there and not at least show a little bit more about that. Like, they didn't have to completely answer the question, but... That being dropped irks me a little bit. The other thing is that, and this kind of fucks up the whole story a little bit to an extent, so this is why I would definitely drop it to an 8 over a 10 for sure. Mm -hmm. Them making Isabella a grandmother, I feel like was just way too much of a gimme. That was a a bit of a rush in my opinion too. Because she failed tremendously. Yeah, like she, we got no context on how they ever thought that was a good decision. Like she basically... At this point, from what we can tell, raise them to start with to essentially be the kids that would be able to escape. Like, you know, she or maybe she's just proud of how smart they became and she's proud that, like, her group of kids was the one to finally pull this off, you know? Mm-hmm. But it just it doesn't seem logical for the demons to put her in that kind of position of power that to allow this to happen. Yeah. That doesn't seem logical to me. It seems a little too easy. Yeah, it. I get what you're saying. And, again, this is to me why I think this would have benefited from either if they if they would have had a third season yeah. or if they would have had an extended run of episodes here in the second season. Cause the other first thing season is the got, huge information dump that they got at one time from that pin cap. Like, that's a little that's, too easy as well. A lot yeah. of it's a little too easy, and that's why it feels rushed to me. And I think, if anything, if we would have gotten, instead of just 11 fully narrative narrative, narrative episodes, say we got 26. Mm-hmm. Like, because that's the traditional count. How, how animes usually run is they usually, uh, for a full season, is like 13, but an extended full season, extended season is like when they run for two seasonal, you know, two quarters. And I think if we'd have had 26 episodes instead of just 11 we would have been able to flesh out things a lot more. And I think there's I mean, more than enough here to do that with. So th- think, think about this, and this is just a theory. This doesn't mean this is what happened or, you know, even close to what happened. But the fact that it is two short seasons and the writer has been on board making changes he wants to do the whole time. Mm-hmm. What if he was doing this with basically, you know, permission is like, hey, give me two short seasons to just try some different things and see what, how it works out as an experiment. And then maybe he's planning to, in the future, if he can cut a deal with, you know, either the same production company or another production company to do like a Promise Neverhood, or Prom- Promise Neverland, Brotherhood type deal. Yeah, like, well, the, yeah, we talked about And he'll go that. back and he'll do it way more to the manga, but, may, but maybe also just bring in some of the things that he learned from doing this experimental version of it as well. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that very easily. And my... and, if it, and if it completely fails as an experiment, maybe he'll literally just adapt the manga like you know, like everybody wants after that, and just be like, "All right, here." Who's to like, say? Who's... Nobody I liked mean, it, so here. I mean, who's to say? I mean, if we get a Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood retelling of this, I would not mind it. I would actually be perfectly fine with it. But 
again, we're just gonna have to we're just gonna have to see. So again, Full Metal Al- Full Metal Alchemist did get a second retelling. I think this is strong enough to probably get a second retelling. I think so anyway. That is, I mean, if that's what the original the manga future, is the, the, like eventually. Like, well, yeah, if that's what the original manga artist wants to do. Yeah. I mean, it's can I think it'll be completely contingent on if he wants to do that. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, after seeing how the fans reacted, the manga fans reacted to the show, he may not want to. Like maybe. That's the thing too. Is like I mean, I understand everybody's upset, but if you ever want him to do it the right way. Like, he can't just be, like, yelling horrible things at the artist or anything, you know, if you want him to ever try harder with it. Yeah. It's like, I, like I, at least I've not heard of them sending him death threats or anything, but just knowing how people treated the dude who did the Evangelion, like, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, God, yeah. When they, all when they hear send that the death threats to Anno. That have sent death threats to this guy. When they sent the death threats to Anno over the, end, the original ending of... Uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. I, like, he actually, did I tell you that he actually included some of those in the, uh, in the end of Evangelion, his second attempt at telling the ending? Mm -hmm. Jesus, God. Like, when you read some of the shit that people sent him, that's just, that, for an especially creative mind like Anno, that's terrifying to think about. My whole thing is just, like, be kind to artists. Like, they don't have to put forth the effort to give you any of this. No. Like, critique the work. Like, don't critique the artist. Yeah. Like, and if you're upset with something, be like, I be wasn't upset happy with, with the way it ended. I think it could have benefited from A and B and C and D. Not like, well, I hope the guy who wrote this fucking dies. Like, what the fuck, man? Like, yeah. calm the hell down. And, <laughs> like, and now that, well, that's the amazing thing as well about... Anno's uh, expedition to finish, or to do his version of Evangelion that he was happy with, uh, for the Rebuild series, which, did you know that the Rebuild series that started in 2007 was only supposed to last until, like, 2010? Mm -hmm. The fourth film, which is the final film, just released. 13 to 14 fucking years to finish that series. Yeah. And all of it, and he actually fell into a sharp depression after he made the second and third films. After he made the third film, he was just like, you know what? I'm just going to not touch this for a while. I'm going to go direct a Godzilla film. And he did. And then he came back and he was like, all right, batteries recharged. Let's finish this bitch. And now, here we are. Like, uh, I hope that he has seen Astral Chain. Like, I hope he knows of its existence, because it's obviously a huge tribute, and it's a proof that people still love Evangelion, like, whether or not yeah. everybody was happy with his endings or not, you know, people I... still appreciate it, and not everybody's a big-ass dickhead, like, a whole <laughs> game dev studio made a game that was obviously, like, heavily, like, Evangelion, you know, like, we, we, we acknowledge and approve of Evangelion. Oh well, yeah, I mean like, I there's do. There's a lot of tributes to it in there. There's the gosh, the, the setup and the characters. Like they have some obvious like characters that are inspired by the characters from Evangelion. They have color schemes that are obviously the Evo one color schemes that you can add to your legions. Like it's not subtle that they were like, hey, we're Evangelion fans when they made that. <sighs> and, and you know, it's it actually comes in like multiple things. I mean, because in. Uh... Star Wars, uh, the Last Platinum's Jedi. A bitchin' studio to have be like, yeah, to to like, yeah, it, yeah. Oh, dude, Platinum, yeah, absolutely. But Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, same deal. I mean, they have paint schemes and that that are Ava one, and it's literally a tribute to Evangelion. It's like, yeah. damn, that's awesome. And Promise Neverland, I would say, I'd say, I don't think it has had the cultural impact that Evangelion has had, but no, I would it, say that this yeah. is merited more than enough like I, I hope that this gets the love and attention that it gets that it deserves in the long run unless the last but, episode just really pisses me off somehow like or unless they keep going like and then they really do fuck it up really bad <laughs> like you know yeah like uh I, I don't hate the show at all I really do me neither and I still am not mad that I watched it like, oh you know, no I think dude. it's good I'm not mad about it I'm very happy I was able to watch it it's like, could it have been better? Possibly, but is it bad? No. Who are, like, who are we to say? I mean, so, I don't know. At least it's not really bad. Like, oh, it's no. It's got some things that are eh, but... 
At least it's, it ain't Mad Bull 34. It's still been enjoyable. Worst anime I've ever seen in my entire life. Mad Bull 34. I, I, anytime someone says, oh, dude, this anime is terrible. This anime is awful. It's just like, dude, Redo of Healer. Worst anime of the year. And I'm like, it's not as bad as Mad Bull 34. <laughs> trust me. It's like, it's, it's like, oh, gosh. Uh, freaking Icky Tosin is like the worst anime of all time. And I'm like, not worse than Mad Bull 34, my dude. Not worse than that. I mean, there's always, also always the uh, subbed version of that ghost anime. <laughs> oh, God. No, dude, that's more of a parody comedy at this point. No, no, I mean, but the subbed version, like the original. Oh, version, the subbed version? Right? Yeah, the subbed version. It's probably pretty fucking lame if I had to guess. I, like, the dub version just makes it fucking amazing. The dub version's amazing. Yeah, but it's like, it's like what a I heard, like, the reason they were version. even allowed to do that is because nobody cared or, like, for the, nobody cared for the subbed version at all. And I think that the Japan, the creators of it, the original Japanese creators, actually loved it so much that they were more than happy to allow it. Yeah, I mean, it's... I've seen, like, the first, like, eight episodes, and it's fucking hilarious. They just basically turned oh a serious gosh. anime into a straight-up, like, beautiful comedy. It's probably the funny... It's somehow the funniest anime I've ever watched, even funnier than the comedy anime I've watched. It's like... like I, the I only remember... one that I think comes close, in my opinion, is Shimonetta. I remember his laughter. Ha, 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> he, also used, he also used to tell me things. Touch me. It's like, it's, touch me, huh? Touch me again. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking weird. Funny. I love it. God. All right. So that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. This was Promise Neverland, Season 2, Episode 10. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and hopefully we will see you all in the next one. But until then, I'm Nate. I'm Nick. We'll see you then, everyone. Peace out.